Dr. Lydia Moon Carrera, who among other things represents African NGOs on the UN AIDS board. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah. You are an African woman, you are HIV positive, and you are a medical doctor. I'd like to start off by asking you what the trial results of the microbicide tested in South Africa mean to you. I can't even begin to express the joy and excitement I have over the results of this trial. The Caprisa gel, I am excited. We have been waiting as women for something that will let us have a choice over our bodies. And I'm saying a choice of our bodies because this gel can be used by women when they want to use it, whenever they want to use it, they can use something to protect themselves from getting infected from HIV and AIDS. HIV AIDS. They don't have to, and, and again, even for those who are infected like myself, I can easily go and use that gel. Nobody will know when I'm using it, and I can to be my choice when to use it, and that will protect me from even getting reinfected. And I really believe this is a big, wonderful breakthrough. And coming in this, at this time of the International AIDS Conference, it's exciting. I'm really excited for my women and the women in the grassroots, the women I represent, and the women who I work with. This is an exciting bit of news. The microbicide trial, finally, we have been waiting and waiting, but there is a light always at the end of the tunnel, and this light has come. And who are the women that you represent? How would you describe them? I represent every single woman on, on, in, 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 in the world, but especially women in Africa. I represent all men in Africa, those who are infected, those who are not infected, and those mothers like myself, I represent mothers as well. There's a lot of talk about funding at this conference and the need for more funding. There's also a lot of competing global health interests. So how would you characterize the state of funding and how does that play out on the ground in your home country of Uganda? It's very important because a major part of, of the funding for, for treatment especially comes from donor funding. About 80% of our funding is donor, is donor funding. And I really, we, we're really very worried about this. We know there's a financial crisis in the world today, but we are worried about all the promises and expectations we have been having for, for, for donors giving us, get, getting us funding. We're really worried. There are treatment, there's treatment needs. There are more people getting infected every single day and more women getting infected every day, and we need that funding. The WHO guidelines have come out telling us we need to treat people with a CD per count of 350 and above. We need to treat all women who, who need treatment at, P, at prevention of mother child centers, where in health centers, and we need that funding. And we are very worried because the funding seems to be deteriorate, uh, d diminishing, shrinking. And I'm not even pointing to one donor only because there is funding needed from all donors. And many donors have promised put funding into the global fund, they promised to give funding, the US government promised to put more funding into PEPFA and we're really hoping that there, somebody will sit back in some office somewhere and say this is what I promised and I need to put this funding on the ground, put the funding in place. One of the elements of the new Global Health Initiative, President Obama's GHI, is more coordination of care. So as a practitioner, a medical doctor, can you talk about the importance of coordination of care and maybe your experience of it, that you see patients who are HIV positive, but they also have other health issues as well? It's very important. All other health issues matter because even for a person who's infected, they get opportunistic infections and they need care and treatments and support. And all this is very important. We need all that. But most important of all, we need that person to be alive. Um, in 1997, I was on my deathbed and I, I, I was in Uganda with a city of account of one. And here I am alive today. Looking at you, I'm on antiretroviral therapy. Not only anti I have care, I have support, and I have everything that around me that I need. I agree with that, but I still believe, had I not started on those drugs in 1999, 1998, when I started, 1997 actually, when I started on antiretroviral therapy, I would not be here today talking to you. You're from Uganda. What would you tell donor nations that Uganda and Africa really needs? Uganda, need, Uganda and all African nations need funding. We need funding for treatment, care and support, but especially to keep people alive with antiretroviral therapy. Those who, need, those who are infected with HIV, they need antiretroviral therapy. And then, of course, we need any, all other things that go around it. We need people who are going to treat us. We need the health systems to work. We agree with that. We need funding for, for, for treating us whatever disease we, 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 we come up with. 
the, the tuberculosis is killing off people in, in Africa. And we know very well that even in Southern Africa, people are dying from TB more than, more than any other disease, those who are infected. Once the immune system goes down, you get infected with any other disease, and we need funding for that. Dr. Lydia Moon-Guerrera, thank you so much for joining us.